Okay, lots of stuff to get through today. Just so you know, it's the fourth quarter. We have basically six weeks to get through all of those topics. And that's not enough time to get through most of those topics with the depth that we need to. So we're picking up the pace, okay? So like today, we've got a lot of calculator work along with 10 slides to get through today, okay? All right, so um, we're going. And hopefully we don't have a snow day tomorrow because that will screw everything else up and push everything else back and make us not so, not so happy. But anyway, anywho, okay? So final topics, we're going to start parametric equations today. Um, and we're going to test on parametric equations two weeks from today, okay? which is really, what's that, five, eight class periods, and then it's test. So nine, nine classes from today will be testing. Okay? Then from there, we're going to go to polar coordinates, complex numbers, and we have to take the NTC exam in order to be dual credit certified for you. Okay? And all of this has to get done before seniors are done, which is like May 16th, something like that, somewhere in that range. Okay? So that's picking up our pace. The days of nice graphs, lines, parabolas, circles, cubic type stuff, those are over. We're going to graph stuff like that now. Okay? That is an actual function. Okay. Okay. Well, it's not a function function, but it's a parametric function. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to get into that. Okay. You will need your calculator. You will need a graphing calculator at some point in time. But first, we're going to learn how to crawl before we can run a sprint. So we're going to graph stuff by hand. Okay. So first off, let's talk about what a parametric equation is. Now, this is not in your note packet. Okay. However, you can pay attention to it a little bit and figure it out from there. Sorry, I had to get down my... Okay. So in a normal, normalized function, we would have y equals f of x. So that could be your, that could be a line, like y equals 3x plus 2. That could be a quadratic, y equals x squared plus 6x plus 8. Okay, all those different things. Those would be our normal type of function that you're used to in the, you might want to grab everything, and not just walk past the sign that says grab everything. Okay. And so in that case, x is your independent variable or your input, what you're putting into the function to get out what you, your output. Okay. So this is your you're plugging into your function. Okay. The y then is the dependent variable. It is your output, or what you get out. Okay? And then that allows you to then plot the point x comma y. And you'd rinse, lather, and repeat that process for a bunch of different x's until you see the pattern that's involved. If it's a line, you see the line developing, and then you draw the line in. If it's a parabola, you find out where the vertex is, and then you can draw in your parabola and all that stuff. You've done that 
thousands upon thousands. Okay? A parametric equation, which we're going to start today, has three variables. Okay? It also has two functions. These are different. Actually, hold on, tap break. Say it this way. The function for x is different than the function for y. They are two distinct functions. Okay. So now t is your independent variable. And it gets plugged into Alan plug. It gets plugged into both F and G to get your X and your Y. Both x and y now are dependent. And you still plot x comma y. But you have to plug it into both. You plug the same t into both the x function, or the function that is described for your x, and the function that is described for your y. You have to plug it into both. Don't just get to plug it into one. We're not graphing t comma something. We're still graphing x comma one. Okay. Let's try this one. Here's number one on your note sheet now. Okay, So we want to sketch the following parametric equation for t e is in the realm of negative 3 to positive 2. This right here is very important. It limits the t values that you put in. You are only going to put in t values between negative 3 and positive 2. Okay. So you're only going to put those in. So I would start in filling in, a, if we we're doing this by hand, which in this case we are, we would have t values starting at negative 3, then we'd go to negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And that's it. We're taking this big function and we're just looking at a little snapshot of it. Okay. Okay. So if I plug in t for x, then negative 3 plus 1 is going to be negative 2. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. So I get those values for my axis. When I plug in for y, negative 3 squared is 9. Negative 2 squared is 4. Negative 1 squared is 1. 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4. So now I have to plot my points. Here is my first point, negative 2 comma 9. Negative 2 comma 9 is right there. My next point is 
negative one comma four. Right there. My next point is zero comma one. There. My next point is one comma zero. There. My next point two comma one. And three comma four. Now, the hardest part of graphing your function is what shape is this function going to be? Parabola. And what are you going to want to do with the parabola? You're going to finish it off, you're going to extend it all the way out to the L. So it goes up like a U, right? Wrong. Your graph for this function is just. There. If you extend it, you are wrong because we are taking just that snapshot of this function. Okay? Parametric functions do not get extended on forever in one in one way, unless you've got infinity as one of your t restrictions. Okay? Then, what it says is now we want to eliminate the parameter. And what that means is we're going to find an equation in terms of just x and y of this very function. Okay? So what you do to eliminate the parameter is you take one of your functions, either for x or for y, doesn't matter which one and you solve it for t. In this particular case, I'm going to say x equals t plus 1. And I'm going to solve that for t by simply subtracting 1 from both sides, giving me x minus 1 equals t. Then I'm going to take that, and I'm going to put it into the other function. So in this particular case, the other function is y equals t squared. So I would make that then become y equals x minus 1 squared. So this function would be y equals x squared minus 2x plus 1. Which would be the parabola, the parent function of our parametric function. We just took a snapshot of it. Okay. You now try graphing by hand this function for cosine of t or sine of t, for x and for y. Okay. We gave you some specific ones to try in there. We did that intentionally because those are off of the unit circle. Yes on those? Yeah. So four comma zero. Uh, then we had negative four comma zero. Zero comma negative four. Four. You get a circle. Yes? Let's eliminate the parameter. Now with trig functions, 
if we eliminate the parameter with trig functions and x equals 4 cosine of, did I put t or theta? t, sorry about that. 4 cosine of t, I'm going to not solve for t, but I'm going to solve for cosine of t. in the first one, and I'm going to solve for sine of t in the second one. Because then I can use the hammer, and the hammer tells me that, well, cosine of t is x over 4, but I'm going to square that. Sine of t is y over 4, and I'm going to square that, and that's going to equal 1. Squaring a fraction allows me to square both the top and the bottom, so then this would become x squared over 16 plus y squared over 16, is equal to 1. Get rid of the fractions, multiply everything by 16, gives me a circle centered at the origin. We learned about that way back the first semester. Okay. With a radius, in this case, of 4. This is what we have. This is what we have. Now, let's go to the calculators. First thing you need to do is you need to turn your calculator on. Again, I would not trust the person before me that calculated with it, so I would double tap the on key, and you need to, you don't get a choice in this one, you need to start a new document. You do not want to save it. You can't do this in Sketchpad. You gotta do it in documents. You're gonna start a new document, and we are going to start a graph. We're gonna add a graph. Now the problem with this is that it defaults back to our old school regular single function method. So we need to change that to parametric. And how we go about doing that is we go into menu. Menu. Graph, Entry, Edit. It's number three. That gives you all the different ways that you can enter things into your graph. And we want to choose which one? Parametric, it's number four. It's what we're doing. Okay. Now when we choose parametric number four, notice what happened to our function input area. We now have an X input. We have a Y input. We have a T range, and we have something called a T step. Okay. The X part is going to be the X part from the, from the function, the problem that you're given. The Y part is going to be the Y part from the problem that you're given. The T range you're going to have to change around depending on the T range in your problem, but that will also be given to you. The T step is how often the calculator calculates what you're doing. The bigger the T step, the more clunky your graphs will be. The smaller the T step, the smoother the curves your graph will be. Okay? So for instance, on the last one, on this, let me go back to here. On this one where we graphed it by hand, the calculator, if we had a large T-step, it would look like that, where it's, it's very flat and clunky. Okay? But a smaller T-step allows us then to get a nice smooth curve. Okay? So we've got 5 cosine of T, 3 sine of t, and we're going from 0 to 2 pi. Okay? 
So here we go. So in our x, okay, we're going to go 5 cosine is under trig of t. In our y, we're going to go 3 sine under trig of t. It said we needed to go from 0 to 2 pi. 0 is there. 6.28 is 2 pi. If you don't want to believe it, you can erase that and literally put in 2 and then the pi. But it will change it back to 6.28 as soon as you hit that. Once you have that inputted, when you hit enter, you should now see your graph. Anybody notice anything about their graph? Any eagle-eyed people that can see anything wrong with their graph? What's wrong? There's a little gap in it right there. Yep. A little gap right there. Yeah? Because it didn't calculate the very last part to get us all the way home up. If we would go something bigger than 2 pi, we would have gotten a complete graph. Because we just keep rewriting over the top. Okay. You now try number four. Graph me the t cubed minus 3t plus 1 and y equals 2t. Agree? Got a little funky s type thing going on. Again, noticing the fact that, especially on that last one, the function stops. It doesn't continue on forever and ever in both directions. It stops with those values that we have in our t range. So if we plugged in negative 2.5, that would be the uppermost point, leftmost point, rightmost point, whichever one it is. Okay, that's, but that's the, that's the boundary, and then it flows from there until we get to a t value of 2. Okay? We're going to use this a lot starting tomorrow, okay, with, we're going to be launching things like that, okay, where we're going to be launching things. The half of your summative test for this unit is something called the ring of fire rep, where you're going to take a little metal or a little steel ball, and you're going to launch it through a ring at a specific height that you determine, and then you're going to land it in the cap of a soda bottle on the floor. Okay? So you're going to have to do all of that calculation, and it all goes through parametrics. Okay? So Tony and Sue are launching lawn darts 20 feet from the edge of a circular target of radius 18 inches. Sue throws the dart directly at the target, releases it four feet above the ground with an initial velocity of 25 feet per second at a 55 degree angle. The parametrics that model this situation is below. So these are the parametric equations for this one. We want to know, will the dart hit the target? Okay. So graph these, or graph this parametric function, Graph that parametric function. Make sure your calculator is in radians, or excuse me, not radians, in degrees, because we're dealing with degrees. If you don't know how to change your your function or your yours back in, you click up here, drag your cursor up here, and just click on it. Either it's in radians or it's in degrees. Radians or degrees. 
Okay. It does make a difference. Here, let me show you how it makes a difference. Here is this function in radians. Here is the same function in degrees. If you don't see it, it's literally right there. That's all you get to see of it because you're only going 6.28 degrees instead of 360 degrees around. So the, the, the mode of your calculator matters. Okay? That's what I get. What's wrong with it? What's wrong with it? Why not? We probably need to move our graph out a little bit, right? Yeah. Okay. So there's a couple of different ways that we can adjust our graph so that we see the complete graph. Okay. So first off, we can grab onto the axes and we can yank it either way and that will adjust said Huh. Yeah. What was this scenario again? Refresh my memory. We're throwing a lawn dart, right? Okay, so we're throwing a lawn dart. How come it goes? So this line right here. Um, what do I want to do? We'll do it this way. What do you need? I'm getting there. Okay. What does this Make, I'll even make it the color to help you out with it. What does this line right here represent? No. It's what? The ground, right? Okay. It's the ground. Okay. They're launching it from four feet up. So this is like the person here, big, long, tall body, and they're throwing it from here, and it's going that way. Okay? It hits the ground then, right? What happens if you've ever thrown something? What happens when it hits the ground? Oops, they hit the ceiling. What happens? Not according to this. What what is this saying it does? Goes through the floor, right? Goes through the ground. Does that happen? Have you guys ever played Wander before? You know, it was a big popular game back in the seventies, but then it got banned because people started getting stuck in the head. So they're metal tips. Because they stick in the ground and they just stop real quick. Okay? So here on this one, I'll go back to my calculator now. On this one, the T value, the T value doesn't matter. Other than if we did this, okay, so it's still in, it's in the air. What is the T value truly in this problem? Of the working point of the four. Gosh, bless America. I just have to do it the old fashioned way. Tab up uh, I'll make it point five. What is the T value representing this problem? 
Nope. Change it again. I'll give you a hint. The word starts with T. Time. The amount of time in the air. So as long as you're something over and it hits the ground, it's okay. So the T value doesn't matter in this particular one. Okay? Now, 20 feet away was the target, and the target went out 3 feet, right? Because it's a circle. Did it hit the target? You want your water bottle? Did it hit the target? Yeah, yeah, it hit the target. Because it actually hit 22.68 feet away. So that's within that 20 to 23 foot range. Yeah, well, that's the other, that was the other one. If yours didn't show. That twenty-two point actually the twenty-two point six eight might be the that might be the end number, not the where it gets. Now that I'm thinking about it, but you can always trace your graph, and you can go left and right. This one I got to go over here to this, and so you're tracing the path here of your. So it actually hits somewhere between twenty and twenty-one feet. So it's not 22.68, but still within that range. Squeeze there, baby. Mm -hmm. Okay. With me? Everybody see how that how, how I'm figuring out that it hits? I'm looking at this number right here. Because there it's 20. There it's 21. So it probably hits in the 20.5 range. We could zoom in closer and we could get more exact. Later on this week, we'll show you how to algebraically solve for this. Okay? Good, good stuff. All right. Try this one. Graph it for me. This is just, this is just, you don't have to write this one down. This is just a, a graph, this one, and let's see where it, it falls. So, it said 3 cosine of theta, right? However, because this is a function of t, we have to go 3 cosine of t, then plus 1. 2 sine of t, minus 2. Oops, we're in degrees. Got to switch it over to radians to see it. What do you mean? Are you on degrees? So we have that one. Let's try the spiral of Archimedes with that these window settings. You notice that your T range has changed. Another little helpful trick for you. So we need to go from 0 to 4 pi. If you forget where the pi key is, even though it's labeled right down there, you can literally just type in 
pi, and it'll recognize it. And then we want it to go menu window. We want to be negative 20 to positive 20, negative 15 to positive 15. That happened to you too. Oh, because, oh yeah, because we didn't put times. You can just put times in there. Yep, I forgot about that. There you go. Yep. It doesn't recognize the, the, the multiplication. Yep. Well, what happened? We stopped it at 4 pi. Well, what would happen if we went to 5 pi? What do you mean? It would keep spiraling. It would add probably another. It would add another half of a spiral, right? So it would end probably over here. If we went to six pi, and on this side, if we went to six point five pi, where would it end? Up top, right? It would end, end on the y-axis, so on and so forth. Okay. Yeah. Love it. Good stuff. In there. We forgot to answer the question where the center was on this one. One comma negative two, yep. And you get that from there and there. Yep, that's where you get that from. Okay. At the bottom of your note sheet, there are two multiple choice questions. For you to do as your entrance ticket tomorrow. Okay? If you get them done in the next four minutes, great, grand, wonderful. Um, but you need to have them done in order to come into class tomorrow. Okay? Be ready to show them to your teacher when you get here. 